Oh, progesterone and oil. If you haven't used it, you've heard about it. Okay, it is, um, it is the nemesis of all of this, mostly because it's a, it's a nightly intramuscular injection in the old backside and it takes its toil on you after a while. Now there's a lot of tips I wanna tell you about how to do this. Um, it is the best support, luteal phase support um, when we're doing IVF, that's why most all physicians use it. Now, not all. Um, some have other choices and, you know, every physician's different and has preferences. And, and like a lot of things, there is never really a right answer. All right. Progesterone and oil. Progesterone and oil is also a multi-dose vial. So you're going to use this vial. Uh, it, it depends on your dose. It could last you um, uh, five days. It could last you 10 days. Uh, it all depends on how much you're, you're dosing out. Now, I mentioned earlier about refrigerating medications and I mentioned there were a couple you don't want to refrigerate. This is one of them because this is an oil product. It's a little bit thicker. Okay, you don't want to refrigerate that. It'll only get thicker and that can't work for you. So, so this is something we want to keep out at room temperature. Sometimes people even try to maybe roll it between their hands and warm it up a little bit because an oil that's maybe, you know, a little bit warmer might be a little bit thinner. Now, there are different oils that this progesterone comes in. Your coordinator ordered yours specifically. Um, most often you see it in one of two things. You see it either in sesame oil or in what's called ethyl oleate. That's what this is. This is ethyl oleate. Now they look the same with the exception that ethyl oleate tends to be a little bit thinner of an oil. So when I prescribe this for my patients, they get to use a little bit of a thinner needle, not a shorter needle, but a little bit of a thinner needle. Uh, makes a little bit of a difference, but like a lot of products, um, oils and that, sometimes you have allergies or irritation. So you have to pay attention to that. And if you notice, besides the normal lumps and things that can come with taking this injection, if you get a raised, itchy area that's uh, inflamed and uh, getting bigger and redder, you make sure you point that out to a coordinator because you just might be having, you know, a localized reaction to the actual oil that, uh, that the progesterone comes in. So this is usually started um, after your egg retrieval or usually about five days or so before an embryo transfer if you're in a recipient type of cycle. Um, usually it's done in the evening time, um, between dinner and bedtime. It's just done sometime in the evening. Now, this is gonna take a couple of maneuvers to withdraw it out, simply because this is an intramuscular injection. Now, up to this point, um, with the exception of the estrogen and oil, pretty much everything you've been taking is big subcutaneous. This guy's gonna be intramuscular as well. Now, whenever we do intramuscular, we always withdraw with one needle and inject with another. In other words, I want a nice fresh needle to do the injection. Usually just to make life easy for myself, I'll use a three ml syringe with maybe a big ugly 18 gauge needle just because it makes it easier to draw the medication out. But of course, then I always switch to a little bit friendlier of a needle to actually do the injection. Now, most often your dose is gonna be 50 milligrams, or one ml, because that's the concentration of progesterone and oil. It tells you right on the front, it's 50 milligrams per mil. So if your dose is 50 milligrams, you're withdrawing one milliliter. Now, sometimes in folks in recipient type cycles are on 100 milligrams or two mls. So I'll demonstrate for you one ml. Now again, I'm using a three ml syringe a big ugly needle on it just because it makes it easier. Again, I'll always with my multi-dose vials, of course, always going to clean the top of our little glass vial there. This will just, pretty simple enough, pretty basic, needle goes right in and as usual we turn it upside down and I'm just going to pull down on the plunger. Now this is thicker so you might notice, you going to be a little stronger about this guy and we're going to just withdraw out. Again, I can always pull down and withdraw out more and Fool around with a little bit until I get my exact dose in there. Push up, get those bubbles out. There's one mil right there, good enough. So there is one mil. Now, of course, I'm gonna remember to turn that, take that needle off. I'm gonna pull down on the plunger here to get all the medication in the syringe and I'll unscrew this needle and take it right off. Now. Because I tend to prescribe ethyl oleate, I prescribe 
25 gauge one and a half inch needles. Usually you're always using a one and a half inch needle. Now, if, you, if you're using sesame oil, then you've probably been prescribed a 22 gauge because the sesame oil is a little bit thicker. Doesn't matter at all for what this medication's doing and the luteal support it's providing. Um, now, some folks will try to use a 25 gauge even though they're using sesame oil. And if you can, you can go ahead and try it. It's just a thicker oil, it's kind of tough to do. Now I've put on that 25 gauge needle and as usual, I'll always wanna prime the needle. I'm just gonna push up on the plunger till I see a little drop of the medication right here. Now remember, I said this is thicker, there we go. Uh, so this is, you know, it's gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit more resistance when I go to inject this medication. Now, tricks about progesterone and oil. One of my biggest recommendations is to be laying down when you get this injection taking all the weight off of your, your legs, your, your, your backside is gonna make the difference in comfort for the shot. A lot of folks say, well, I try, you know, I leaned, I took some weight off a of foot. Um, try, just lay down when you get the shot. I even like it at bedtime because that way you're down and you're not getting up again, you're not using that muscle. Uh, so that's one tip. Um, now, different folks, uh, some people like to, to warm the area up. They take a heating pad and try to warm the skin up a little bit. Other folks swear by putting an ice pack there. Doesn't matter to me. Whatever works for you. Um, now, now that I've got this ready to go in the syringe, some folks will go ahead and they'll run this under some warm water just to warm it up a little bit. That's okay too. Um, now, sometimes uh, folks will ask me, how fast should I inject this? Well, usually it isn't anything you can inject fast because it's thicker. You'll notice that when you go to inject it, it's not like those water-based medications you've been doing. Personally, I, I don't go particularly slow. Um, I just let the resistance of the medication guide me and I just, I, I get, it, get it done. Now, other folks, again, whatever your preference is, they swear by, I just do it nice and slow. Others would rather the needle not be there for that long. So again, no right or wrong for me, do what's comfortable for you. And uh, next I'll show you exactly where we're gonna do this.